We should mute ourselves. Oops, did I do that right? Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 LSA Annual Meeting Awards Ceremony. This is David Robinson, Director of Membership and Meetings. Um, before we get started, I would like to ask you all for reasons of bandwidth to um, turn off your camera and your microphone unless you have a, uh, are one of the awardees. So what we'll do, I will um, start running the, um, the slideshow for the awards ceremony shortly. Um, if you are being honored, please turn your camera um, on. And after the slide for your award has been read, we will, um, you can uh, turn your microphone on and have uh, an acceptance speech of up to five minutes. After each award, um, everybody can turn their camera and microphone on and we'll have a little applause for, for each award briefly. Um, so I think that's uh, about it. Um, and uh, you can always chat uh, me or one of us behind the scenes if you have any questions. So um, again, unless you have a speaking role, unless you are Penny Eckert or um, one of the awardees, um, please turn your cam and microphone off and we will, uh, and I invite you to turn it back on if you're um, actually getting one of the awards, so. Hey, wait, wait, David, did I misunderstand? Did you just say that people are gonna applaud after each one? That was, that was our thought. Do you think we should just do it at the end? No, I think it's, uh, what if people, I, 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 so I think we agree was, agreed it was gonna be at the end, but I don't care. Yeah, no, I think it should be um, after each one and we all turn our cameras okay. on for a minute and applaud after each one. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Okay, great. So um, cameras off everybody and I will start the, um, the uh, slideshow and uh, Penny, please take it away. Um, okay. As soon as I start. The, um, I'm screen sharing and here we go. Okay, cool. So once again, welcome to the 2020 awards ceremony held in bedrooms, living rooms, and hopefully, hopefully some other imaginative places around the world. Uh, so it's my great pleasure to present a distinguished group of linguists who are being honored for their exceptional contributions to linguistics and to languages in their communities of speakers. Can I remind people to switch their mute on? Uh, okay. So I begin with the award for the best student abstract submitted to the 2020 annual meeting. First place goes to Hironori Katsuda and Jeremy Steffman, both from the University of California, Los Angeles, for their abstract entitled, The Role of Segment and Pitch Accent in Japanese Spoken Word Recognition. Second place goes to Shannon Bryant of Harvard University for her abstract entitled Evidence from Oromo on the Typology of Complementation Strategies. And third place goes to Maura O'Leary and Richard Stockwell, both of the University of California, Los Angeles for their abstract entitled Skills-Based Grading, a Novel Approach to Teaching Formal Semantics. So congratulations to all of you can we all unmute? <laughs> Yay. Yahoo. Congratulations. Yay. Huzzah. We could also put congratulations in the chat if that's easier for some people. But noise is good. Noise is good too. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations, everyone. Okay, the next one is the Elizabeth Pine Dayton Award. Want the next slide, David? Okay. So this is normally a travel award for a graduate student specializing in sociolinguistics. This year's recipient is Pachola Umbal, a graduate student in sociolinguistics in the PhD program at the University of Toronto. His specialization is a study of variation and change in heritage Tagalog, working in the Tagalog dias diasporic community in Toronto. He's already embarked on a robust program of publication of his research, and this award recognizes both his academic achievements to date and his academic promi <laughs> promise in the future. Uh, so join me in congratulating Pocholo. 
Um, I do. Um, just very quickly, I um, just want to say that I'm very, very overwhelmed, but very happy at the same time to be in the same room as all of you. Um, I'm truly honored to be receiving this award. Um, in fact, some faculty members in my department have shared their fond memories of Professor Dayton. So receiving this award is all the more meaningful. Um, so I thank the awards and the executive committee for recognizing this um, my work in heritage languages um, and the LSA really for providing students like myself with opportunities to advance their careers in linguistics and beyond. So thank you very much. Great. <laughs> Great. Now the Excellence in Community Linguistics Award recognizes the outstanding contributions that members of language communities, typically outside the academic sphere of professional linguists, make for the benefit of their community's language. This year's award goes to Sicaritiso, a native speaker and language activist of the Karbi language of Northeast India. He has been both documenting the traditional language and developing the modern language, in, particularly through, in particular through publishing books and articles and audio video recording knowledge of his community members. Tiso has extensively served the Karbi Lamet Amai, the Karbi Literary Organization, and co-founded the Center for Karbi Studies. He was the primary Karbi collaborator for a grammar of Karbi, which won the 2015 Panini Award of the Association for Linguistic Typology. Currently, Tiso is documenting the Karbi song language and traditional lullabies, while also focusing on Karbi lexic lexicology both to edit a comprehensive dictionary of the Karbi language and as chief editor of a multilingual dictionary project involving eight indigenous community languages of the region. So we have a statement, uh, an acknowledgement, wonderful. Um, Sorry, folks, I just understand the audio wasn't sharing, so I'm going to figure that out. One moment, please. Karbi language, let's... Pardon? As the year 2021 begins on a positive note, I want to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt greetings from Caribbean Long for the season and express my heartfelt gratitude for having nominated me as one of the recipients of Linguistics Society of Americas Excellence in Community Linguistic Award for 2021 Award. I thank 
from the core of my heart to Linguistic Society of America for having put their trust and belief in me. Even though we never met once physically, thank you for acknowledging and recognizing my work that you trusted my work and on my service rendered to the community itself speak volume. Well, in the very first place, whatever amount of work I did was always done at the behest of my people. It was never for once intended to achieve accolades or benefits. My sole aim was to promote and preserve our Kirby language, lest it get lost. I ventured into research work to study more on Kirby orality, folk tales, riddles, proverbs, that singing, that's called Kacharahe in Kirby language, uh, lullabies collected and wrote children's stories for the age group of 3 to 13 years. I then met Dr. Linda Connard in the year 2008. We collaborated for her PhD project, which gave fruition to the thesis A Grammar of Kirby. This thesis won the Panini Award as well. I in particular and the people of Caribbean Long in general are thankful to her for having selflessly helped in promoting the Caribbean language through her thesis. I would also like to take this time to thank a few more people who are involved in helping me. People who are written on my behalf for this Linguistic Society of America's, America's nomination. They are Father Ubizos, Professor Scott Delancey, Mr. Dharam Singh Teron, Director, Center for Kirby Studies, Mr. Karsing Teron, former president of Kirby Lamed Amai, Devasri Dattarai, Assistant Professor Jadapur University, Calcutta. Maggie Katar P, Assistant Professor, Defu Government College. Also, Mr. Long Singh Bay, who was ever willing to share his intellectual property with me. There are many resource persons whose contribution cannot be overlooked. They are Satellite of Kongjuk Athoi Bokulia, Harsing Crew of Borkok, Korsing Crew of Borkok, Pator Senar. Hemaya Kong of Uncheret, West Caribbean Long, Long Sing Rong Pi Habe, Long Sing Rong Pi Habe Riso, Umla Rong, Siko Pi Rong Hang Pi of Hamren, Biren Sing Pang Chu, Rong Martu, Samson Katar, Resak Tepi, Jim Tong. I also thank Karbi Lamed Amai, Center for Karbi Studies, Firebird, Mr. T.P. Hanse, and his wonderful team of Arling Daily, Mr. Buddhist Timung, Bamani, Nogao, Mr. Hirena Teron, Sunapur Kamrup, and Mr. Samkiri Poteron Langne of Dipu for their support. My heartfelt gratitude is extended to my better half, Mrs. Kachitanapi, who stood by me through thick and thin. My son, Salamat, my daughter-in-law, Mrs. Bandana Karen Terangpi, my daughter, Larsika, and son-in-law, Mr. Augustine Bay, and my late son, Sir Poron Kalanti. So, for their continued support in every effort and step that I do. And to the many people of Caribbean Long and beyond Caribbean Long, thank you. It's because of you all that I live and I do the work that I do. Last but not the least, I would like to encourage the young generation towards the upliftment and preservation of Caribbean language. 
the youths are the backbone of our society. Therefore, they therefore they have our huge role to play in keeping the language alive and sustained. Once again, thank you, Linguistic Society of America. I am humbled to acknowledge me. Cardom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, the Mentoring Award recognizes the work of individuals or organizations that have exhibited a sustained commitment to mentoring linguists. The 2020 award goes to Donna jo jo Napoli of Swarthmore College. Over her 45 year career, Donna Jo Napoli has lived a life defined largely by committed and sustained mentoring. Her personalized mentoring style has transformed the lives of many. She was a visionary leader and an instrumental force in building the Trico or Tri College Linguistics Program of Swarthmore, Haverford, and Bring More by mentoring students, junior colleagues, and administrators who became allies. Using her linguistic skills as an advocate for the language rights of deaf children, she mentors others to help them do the same. Dr. Napoli's multifaceted and long-term mentoring has made an overwhelmingly strong and positive impact on the field. Do we have some words from Donna Jo? Yes. Can, can you turn me on? Uh, on. You're on, oh, on. Okay. I can't see you. Okay. Um, Turn your host, camera on or I will. Yeah. The host has to let me. Oh, okay. It says that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ask to start video. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, oh, there you are. There you are, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm very happy. Um, and I do want to say something. I want to tell you all a little story. Um, in March, when so many people went into quarantine, um, Jean Myris of Gallaudet University and I looked at each other and we thought about deaf children ha who were suddenly at home um, with uh, looking out the window at people wearing masks and um, having their parents stay home all day. Uh, um, nobody could go to school. Um, grandma couldn't visit anymore and many most deaf children are born into hearing families so maybe there was nobody in their home who could explain to them what was going on um it it, it seemed to us like it was a moment of dire need for these children uh, so we reached out to deaf organizations all around uh everywhere we could find them and ask, do you want to work with us to make books of explaining the virus uh, to the deaf children in your country? And a lot of them said yes. And suddenly we had so much work on our hands. So what we did, uh, Jean and I have taught a course uh, four times, uh, co-taught a course on making video books for deaf children. What we did was turn to our past students um, we didn't have that many, it was a small course, um, and most of them had graduated and we didn't have the emails for most people, just those who had kept in contact with us, but we wrote to all of them and almost everyone we wrote to wrote back uh, and said, yes, we'll help you. And over the uh, April through August, we made over 40 video books for deaf kids. And at the end of it, Jean and I uh, said to our past students, thank you so much. And they said, no, thank you um, for letting us help. And I really do understand um, when you have an opportunity to serve, it makes you feel better. It makes you feel not so helpless in this world. Um, it gives you a small 
sense that maybe you have some um, uh, uh, ability to control something, um, it makes you feel not quite so alone. Um, so I want to say thank you to every student and colleague I've ever had who has given me the gift of allowing me to try to help them. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Donna Jo. Yay! Yay! Woohoo! The Kenneth L. L. Hale Award recognizes scholars who have done outstanding work on the documentation of a particular language or family of languages that is endangered or no longer spoken. The 2020 Kenneth Hale Award goes to Sharon Hargis of the University of Washington for decades of tireless work with three endangered Athabascan languages of Alaska and the Pacific Northwest and the Yakima Sahaptan language of Washington State. Professor Hargis has worked together with the communities of Morristown, Witsuit Ain, Fort Ware, Kwaracha Tekene, and the Lower Yukon River, Degzinal, and with co-author and consultant, Dr. Virginia Beavert, Yakima Sahaptan, in documenting, recording, analyzing, teaching, and revitalizing these four languages. She has produced grammars, dictionaries, sound files, teaching materials, and scholarly articles numbering thousands of pages and thousands of recordings. She has also left a legacy of Athabascanists and other linguists she has trained who are themselves now devoted to the preservation of endangered languages. Sharon? Thank you very much for that, Penny, and thank you, LSA. I, I, this is a big honor for me. And I'd also like to thank some other uh, institutions. Uh, first of all, my university, the University of Washington, which has given me the time to do all this. Um, of course, I want to thank the many wonderful speakers I've worked with and colleagues who deserve this as much as I do, if I deserve it. And I'd also like to thank my husband, Dave, who's also uh, made it possible for me to do this work. So um, thank you again, everybody. Yay! Yay! I'm Yay. <laughs> the best paper and language award for 2020, I guess I don't need to explain what it's for, goes to Julie Ann Leggett, Farouk Akush, Milena Shea Kaita, and Don, Donald Ringe, all of the University of Pennsylvania, entitled On Passives of Passives. Voice phenomena are core to the expression of verbal arguments in many languages, and the study of passive voice has had an especially long and rich history. A core intuition about passive voice verbs is that they cannot themselves be passivized, sometimes first given explicit treatment by Perlmutter and Postal in 1977. However, a deeper explanation of this fact has proved elusive, and subsequent work has identified three apparent counterexamples found in Turkish, Lithuanian, and Sanskrit. In their 2020 language paper, Julianne Leggett, Farouk Akush, Milena Sherekaita, and Don Ringe re-examined these three, three case studies, and through careful, detailed, empirical argumentation, demonstrate that in each case, the construction represents something other than a passive of a passive. Building on recent traditions that decompose ver verbal argument structure in the syntax, Leggett et al. show that analysis of the passive as a separate voice head that only derives a passive function when used in exactly one context in lieu of an active voice head naturally explains why verbs cannot be passivized twice. This study thus shores up a decades old generalization about passive voice, while also offering a new understanding of what the central ingredients of voice are. I believe Julie has an is going to speak. There you go. Hi, yes, thank you very much. I'm speaking on uh, behalf of my co-authors here. 
So we want to thank our, our uh, language editors for all their hard work on this and uh, thank our Lithuanian and our Turkish consultants for all their help. And I think we'd like to um, em emphasize the uh, utility of going back and looking at old data using the plethora of modern standard tests and hopefully finding new insights. And uh, thank you to the LSA. Yay! Congratulations, thank you. Congratulations. The Leonard Bloomfield Book Award for 2020 goes to John Essling, Scott Moisig, Allison Benner, and Lisa Crevier Buchmann for their book published by Cambridge University Press and entitled Voice Quality, The Laryngeal Articulator Model. Essling, Moisig, Benner, and Crevier Buchmann's Voice Quality presents a groundbreaking analysis of the phonetics of the lower vocal tract and traces the extraordinary breadth of its consequences. Their laryngeal articulator model draws on a wide variety of instrumental observations and computational simulations to provide a comprehensive model of voice quality and other laryngeal articulations, supported by a wealth of videos and sound files available online. The authors provide a sound theoretical basis for not only the phonological realization of laryngeal articulation, but also its emergence from infant vocalizations, its exploitation for paralinguistic communication, including individual voice quality, accent, speech, and vocal song styles in many cultures, the analysis and treatment of clinical, clinical disorders of the lower vocal tract, and its role in sound change and phylogeny. So we have John. Thank you, Penny. Uh, <laughs> This is a great honor, and it's extremely humbling to receive this award from colleagues, particularly that this recognition comes from the, Ling Ling the Linguistic Society of America. Thank you sincerely for that. Um, I'd like to acknowledge and thank those who gave me the tools to do phonetic research. Uh, Ian Catford, Tony Anthony, David Abercrombie, and John Laver. Um, in writing the book, uh, Ours was a truly collaborative effort over many years, and I'd like to thank everyone who participated in our research. This includes colleagues, uh, research assistants, and many, many language consultants, and also to Cambridge University Press for their extremely attentive and detailed production of the book. Um, I'm delighted and deeply honored by this award. Thank you very much. I am most grateful, though, to my co-authors. Scott? Hello, greetings from Singapore. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Well, I guess it's my turn to say something. So I uh, also am uh, overwhelmed with no, the... Uh... Hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes, I, I was saying I'm completely overwhelmed with the... Uh, you know, the award. Thank you, Penelope, for uh, announcing it. And uh, I guess I'd uh, you know, like to start by thanking the Linguistic Society of America, of course. Um, you know, we've been digging down in what some would call the nether region of the vocal tract for some time now, and it's, uh, it's genuinely surprising and pleasant. It's a genuine, genuinely surprising and pleasant result that we should emerge from the nether regions and be honored with this award. Um, and I, I want to uh, express my very deep um, gratitude, a very, I owe a very large debt of gratitude to John Essling especially. I certainly wouldn't be where I am today uh, without his support um, over all of the years. Uh, he's been my supervisor, he's my mentor, and he is, is my very good friend. Um, and it's without his visionary insight and infectious passion, the book simply wouldn't exist. Um, I also wish to thank my co-authors uh, and the many collaborators that helped make the book um, possible, along with my friends uh, and family for their unwavering support. And I would like to say I'm very uh, enthusiastic and eager to carry forward the torch that 
was lit by John Laver and his peers um, uh, in the study of uh, voice quality going forward to the next generation. Thank you very much. Alison? Thank you. I hope my internet chose this moment to sort of go unstable. So I hope that you'll hear me for the full duration of what I have to say. <laughs> so um, thank you. It's a great honor um, to receive this award. Um, thank you to the LSA. Um, thank you to my co-authors. Our collaborations over the years have been very meaningful for me. It's been wonderful to see this work come to fruition. I especially want to thank John Esling, who first introduced me to the study of, of voice quality and without whom I would never have persisted in the field to the, um, in, in my studies. And finally, I want to thank my family for um, support and inspiration, especially my daughter, Anna, who um, has witnessed my work in this field from the first weeks of her life. And I've conveyed at least a good enough impression of the field that this very week she has started her first uh, course in linguistics at university. So <laughs> sharing the torch. Thank you so much. Elise? Yes, good afternoon and uh, hello from Paris. So, well, I too, I would like really to thank the Linguistic Society of America for this award. It's really a really great honor. Um, I really especially would like to thank Professor John Essling for having made this pa uh, me part of this dream team. John had a faith in this project from the inception and gave us strength to carry it out with him. He honored me by asking me to contribute to this book. So it was a great adventure and it still goes on. And I would like as well to thank my colleagues and uh, collaborators and thanks my family for uh, supporting all this time. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Liz, and thank you. And again, I'd like to thank all the people who, who lent us their voices and their vocal tracts to work on. Uh, it, was, it was quite exciting for us. I'm not sure how they felt about it, but, but we enjoyed it extremely uh, deeply, let's say. Uh, thank you, Penny. Thank you. Everybody on you. Congratulations. Hey. Bravo. Hey. Can't beat a room full of people, though, let's face it. Okay, the Linguistics Language and the Public Award honors an individual or group for work that effectively increases public awareness and understanding of linguistics and language. The 2020 award goes to the internet linguist Gretchen McCulloch. Gretchen's work is engaging, accessible, and bi-directional, connecting the public to linguistics and linguists to the public. Her work on creating public linguistics, including her All Things Linguistic blog, the podcast Lingthusiasm, a New York Times best-selling book, Because Internet, and the recent linguistics crash course videos, complements her work to train and empower linguists to create material for the public, including guides on writing for the public, presentations and workshops, Wikipedia edit-a-thons, and most re recently, Lingcom grants. Gretchen brings linguistics and the public together with delight and enthusiasm in what BuzzFeed has called a joyously nerdy way. Gretchen. Hello, thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you all for, for being here and thanks uh, Penny for those lovely words. I, I'd like to say a few words about why we have things like the Linguistics Language and the Public Award. And I think most of us agree that we want to live in a world where people know what linguistics is <laughs> and how it's relevant to their lives. Uh, where young people know what linguistics is before they happen to stumble into a linguistics classroom thinking they're getting something completely different. Um, where senior people like administrators and funding agencies and governments and, and so on are like, oh yeah, linguistics, we do want to help you do more of that and not what, what is that? Um, and we're, even where you can say, I'm a linguist at a party in the future when we go to parties again, uh, and not have someone say, uh, what is that? Uh, I'm not even going to say the word question. And 
the public engagement that this award recognizes that the previous winners of this award have also been doing for, for decades at this point, that's what gets us to this point where people recognize that linguistics is cool before they enter our departments and classrooms, and even if they never enter our departments and classrooms. The public engagement is also a lot of work. Writing a blog post, pitching an op-ed, doing an interview on a radio or podcast, let alone setting up any of these things for oneself. These take time and effort, and we get tired. Especially this year, we're all so tired. And one of the tiring things about the role of public engagement within the academic system is how it's a system that isn't really set up to reward this kind of public engagement work. Even though it's funding, it's new students, it's contribution to society in general, it's all dependent on people communicating between the academy and the world outside it. But it's hard to put on a CD. So what I want to say is this, is that you may not be able to change your own incentives. You may not be able to change the fact that people above you in the system might not always recognize public engagement work. But what you can do is you can change the incentives for people coming up behind you. If you're in charge of students, you can make part of the work that they need to do for you already something related to public engagement, whether that's adding citations to academic sources on Wikipedia or having them do an explanation to some part of their friends and family, doing linguistics interviews with their local community, bringing back findings in a relevant way. You could make, you know, students can do this kind of thing. If you're involved in hiring or tenure and promotion decisions, you can decide to count public engagement work as actual work. You can decide to choose a candidate who writes articles and also tells people about them over a candidate who has like one more publication but never tells anybody about them, keeps them, locks them up out of sight, only puts them on their CV. You can pick that, that candidate who does engagement work. If you're giving advice to people who are considering careers in linguistics, you can point to the good that they can do with a linguistics degree outside academia. You can stay in touch with your linguist friends and colleagues and alumni who go into industry so there isn't just one type of mentorship and networking that you know how to provide. And you can even change the incentives of people next to you by recognizing and supporting your peers who are doing public engagement projects like the ones that I do, and to that end, I'd especially like to thank Lauren Gaughan, uh, who's my collaborator on many, many of these projects for, for many years, uh, as well as more generally, all of the Twitter and Tumblr linguists that have been linguisting in public with me uh, for, for many years, and I hope to continue uh, doing so hereafter, even if the social media platforms change. Because this award is given to me, but it's not created by me. It was set up initially by linguists who I don't even necessarily all know, who were trying to change the incentive system. You know, every year, and every year linguists nominate other linguists for it as a way of trying to change the incentive system by, you know, maybe making some of this public engagement stuff the kind of thing you could put on a CD because there's a, an award now, by making public linguistics more visible, giving people like me uh, the platform to make a speech like this. But the people who do this incentive shifting work in the background often don't get the sort of flashy recognition that leads to giving an incentive speech and that they're advocating for on behalf of others. And this is true of all of the awards, whether we're recognizing students and community linguistics and all of these things that we, that we want to promote. It's because of uh, the people who are behind the scenes who are creating the awards and making them happen and deciding what we want to be trying to stand for as a society. So I'm humbled that in a year when we all really had lots of other things to think about, so many other things to think about, uh, even to keep basic functioning to think about, people still decided to keep these awards running, to keep trying to build the future for linguistics that we all want to see, uh, not just when we can finally see each other in person again and hug at some future LSA, but long into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Gretchen. Yay! Yay! Hurrah! Thank you.
this, but I just said thank you. This is fun. So the Early Career Award recognizes scholars early in their career who have made outstanding contributions to the field of linguistics. The 2020 award goes to Nicholas Henriksen of the University of Michigan. Dr. Henriksen exemplifies the commitment to professional excellence that this award embodies. At this phase of his career, Dr. Henriksen has already proven to be a prolific scholar. As an associate professor of Spanish linguistics in the Department of Romance Languages and Literatures and of Trinidadian heritage, self-identifying as West Indian, this award recognizes the achievements of Dr. Henriksen and underrepresented minorities in linguistics. Dr. Henriksen is an advocate for minorities in linguistics and a member of LSA who embraces core values of the society by conducting community engaged research, promoting linguistic and cultural awareness, and seeking social justice. Nick, you there. And I will, uh, let's pause for a minute, but I believe he is not here actually. Ah. Well, let's have a round of applause. So he's definitely not here, but we can applaud him in absentia. <laughs> the Victoria A. Franken Lifetime Service Award recognizes individuals who have performed extraordinary service to the discipline and to the society throughout their career. The 2020 award goes to Larry Hyman. Larry Hyman's career is a testament to the idea that scholarly accomplishment goes hand in hand with devotion to service to the field. On LSA committees and as part of its leadership as an organization of, organizer of scholarly meetings and a member of editorial boards around the world, as a passionate advocate for the LSA and as a host and sommelier at innumerable linguistic events, Hyman makes us all want to belong to the community of linguists. Uh, Larry. Thank you, uh, Penny. I'm so honored following all these other awards. Um, I want to thank the society, especially you, Penny, and the awards committee for choosing me, which was quite a surprise. <laughs> I chaired the uh, awards committee last year, so I know how many really deserving colleagues and others there are who have done so much to serve our society our discipline and the communities that we care so much about. Uh, and thinking about what I wanted to say, I find I want to talk more about Vicki Frompkin and um, about myself only in the context of how much she meant to me, not just as my dissertation advisor. Upon hearing about the award, the first thing I did was email a few Los Angeles friends and former classmates so that we could share our memories of Vicki. In one case, this led Susie Curtis and me to exchange 24 long emails within a week, which I thank you for as well. Those of you who knew Vicki and anyone who saw her even once know that she was one of a kind, an intensely compassionate, generous, and caring person, always reaching out to give to others, to colleagues, students, friends, to UCLA, to the LSA, and other organizations. She orchestrated anticipated, innovated, and built close friendships as she looked out for the interests and needs of those around her. Both UCLA and the LSA were great beneficiaries of her tremendous energy. If she was in the room, it was hard not to hear her voice, her loud New Jersey accent. Any of her students will tell you how she took a personal interest in us. In my first year in graduate school, she returned a paper I had written to me with more red on it than black and white, adding, you have to present this at the LSA, which I did in 1969. When I came back from the meeting, she said, you have to send this to language, which I did. As I've told people for decades, Vicki was my third mother after my mother and my grandmother. She even made a big catered party for my 25th birthday at her house, where she transcribed on it, happy birthday, Larry. Uh, <laughs> I was her protege in the literal sense, protected by her, not just one of her students who has tried to follow in her footsteps to serve. She was chair of her department at UCLA. I was chair at USC and at Berkeley. She was president of the LSA. I was fortunate to be offered the same, but we parted company there. I never was vice chancellor 
or dean of the graduate division. And believe me, you don't want me to be your secretary treasurer. Vicki has left such an incredible staff on so many colleagues and students and happily on the LSA, where my friend Robert Vago, who's here uh, and who was an undergraduate of hers at UCLA mm -hmm. when I was a graduate student, has just established the Victoria Fromke Memorial Prize for Student Excellence in Phonology. Mm -hmm. I want to thank my family for letting me spend as much time as I do on linguistics, about which I'm as passionate as Vicky was. I don't know who wrote that blurb, but I was delighted to see the references to friendship and to my sommeliering, uh, at least two areas where my wife, Lauren, has been able to benefit. So I don't know if you can see this, but uh, I'm ready for you. Uh, I'm sorry I can't pop, pop open a few more bottles for everybody. I want to end by citing the last lines of what I sent to the linguist list in 2007, when they asked me to be linguist of the day and share with students how I got into linguistics. So I'll read the, these two sentences. Linguistics is an international field which still provides great opportunities for teaching, research, travel, collegiality, and friendship. I was very lucky to find my field as early in my life as I did and do not take for granted how good linguistics and so many in it have been to me. And it continues tonight. Thank you all for this very cherished award, which I will really, I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. I should definitely point out, lest I get credit for something I haven't done, all of these citations were written by the nominators for each award. So my, I, I am simply locuta. So I have one other item of business, not so much an award as a reward. The last count, 650 to 645 members had completed their member profiles. In recognition of their diligence, six of these people have been randomly drawn. Three of them, Ramon Escamilla, Jose Ignacio Valde, and Natalia Pomares will receive a one-year membership renewal. And Mary Taffet, Hans Bork, and Heijin Ko will receive a 2022 meeting registration. So uh, you can join me in congratulating them on having had their names drawn out of a hat. <laughs> yay! Um, yay! That's right, yeah. And, um, and, and you too can be eligible for this prize if you complete your membership profile. Are you going to do another one? We are going to do one each year and we're going to have more prizes next year when we have more financial resources to give them out. Oh, oh cool. But let's have a, a round of applause for everybody. So yeah, Cam, Cam's okay. on the microphone's on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us, each other <laughs> for these awards. Um, and next year in person. In Washington, D.C. <laughs> yes. Good. Right, th thank you. Thanks, everybody, and have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Good to see you all. Bye. 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 Bye Congratulations to, Bye -bye, the, to the winners. Bye. All right. Good night.